Welcome guys, today we've got something very special for you. We are having a look at a lens type that is probably owned by most photographers or in their bag, and that'll be a lens like a 2470. Now we have these three units here being the Sony 2470 G Master, the Sigma 2870 Contemporary, and the Tamron 2875 G2. Yeah, and the purpose behind this video is really to determine whether these two third-party lenses are viable options once you compare them to the big daddy over here, the original Sony 24-70. And at almost a third of the price, they really are enticing lenses, but do they still deliver the quality that's demanded? Now, these units are quite similar in a lot of things, and obviously the first would be that they all shoot at straight f2.8. The aperture diaphragm has nine blades, and where they start to differ is obviously size and weight. Now, the Tamron is coming in at 540 grams, the Sigma is 470, while the Sony, obviously being the big boy, is 886 grams. Now, another point of differentiation between these lenses is the minimum focusing distance. Now, the Tamron has 18 centimeter focusing distance, the Sigma 19 centimeters, and then the Sony has a minimum focusing distance of 37 centimeters. Now, when we show you guys some of the images that we took, that difference in focusing distance is going to be very, very apparent. The other difference here is that the Tamron has a little USB-C jack on the side, and that can be used to do firmware updates on the lens. It also has a mappable function button. The Sony over here also has the function button, which is very handy. Unfortunately, the Sigma does not include any of those features. Now, the Tamron and Sigma is both moisture resistant with dust as well. However, the Sony is properly weather sealed, so that's gonna be a little more rough and tough on the Sony. So now we're gonna look at some of the images that we took with these three lenses. Now, just for reference, these images are all of the exact same subject matter, and they were shot on three different bodies so that we weren't changing lenses all the time, just for convenience. And all of the bodies were Sony A7 III's with exactly the same firmware version, everything the same settings, just to try and keep it as uniform as possible so there shouldn't be major variations a little bit of variation in the brightness on some of the images but that's just again because we try to keep the settings exactly the same and clouds move so yeah. you know there's going to be a little bit of variation in that so the first image that we're going to look at is shot at the widest angle on all three of these lenses so for the sony that is 24 mil and for the other two lenses that's 28 mil and it is essentially a log lying across the field in front of the frame and it's a great opportunity to look at the sharpness that you get and also look at the edge to edge sharpness that these lenses are able to attain. Now also for convenience we have shot these images in JPEG and obviously when shooting in RAW you'll have a lot more dynamic range but having a look at the first shot like you said it is a log across and we focused on the log straight in the middle mm -hmm. and jumping between these two images it is very close. Yes, the one thing that kind of almost throws you a little bit is that the Tamron image is a little bit brighter, but in terms of the sharpness, when you punch into the center of that log, which is where the, the focus point was, I find it very, very hard to distinguish between the three images. I think they are incredibly close. Yeah in terms of that center point sharpness. On the side of this log, there was a tree that was sort of in the same focal plane, branches hanging over a little bit. So if we swing up to the top left in this image, you will see that you can see branches, leaves on it with some fruit as well. And again, a pretty good opportunity to have a look at how these maintain their edge to edge mm. sharpness. And again, to my eye, I think it is almost identical. Yeah. I feel the Sony does seem like it distorts ever so slightly on the edges, but that is most likely just because it is slightly wider. That's and right. if you look at the three images not zoomed in, then you can actually see how much wider that extra yeah. quote unquote four millimeters is yeah. in the shot. The Sony gives you quite a bit more, you know, width in that in that frame. So obviously the 24 mm will obviously give you a little bit more sort of barrel distortion in the image again. So 
even though it might look like the Sony distorts more, it's just because it is a wider lens. Yeah, and I think that is something important to keep in mind here. Yes, the Sony is a far more expensive offering, but it is also a wider lens. And you might not think that that difference is that big, but if you look at an image like this, you can actually see that quite a bit more is fit into that frame. So next up, we're gonna look at an image that I shot at 70 mil or the max tele zoom on all three lenses. And we kind of wanted to test sort of the roll off of the depth of field. Um, also, you can probably talk about the sharpness because there is kind of a, a difference here as well. So when you sort of zoom in straight on this uh, sort of middle tree that we, that we took a shot of, you could definitely see the Sony and the Tamron is actually pretty decent in terms of solid sharpness. Yeah, I think the Sony to my eye is a little bit crisper. Yeah. Um, on that focus point, I think it's a little bit sharper. The Tamron is a very, very close second, but I feel like the Sigma is actually a little bit soft on those textures. Definitely, yeah. Now, obviously the main test was depth of field. Now, looking at these images, if we sort of zoom back out again, the sort of roll off of the depth of field, it looks good on, on all three. To my eye, there's very little difference. I think you pick up the separation beautifully out of all three of these. I think it's a pretty solid performance, yeah. really. Can't really spot any difference between them. It's yeah. just that sharpness that ticks it for me a little bit more towards the Tamron and the Sony at this stage. Now, since we spoke about the depth of field, we kind of have to touch on the bokeh that these lenses deliver. And for this shot, we're literally just indoors, taking a quick shot, got some lights in the background so you can see the, um, the circular bokeh that they, that they deliver. And at first glance, all three lenses perform really, really well. But when you zoom in, there are some clear differences. Now, the first one I wanna look at is the Sony. And specifically, I kind of wanna crop down to two orange lights in the corner, sort of right in line with the eyes of the, uh, of the subject here. And to me, those two bokeh balls on the Sony really look like you can see the edges that, um, which is realistically the edges of the diaphragm blades in the aperture. And it is still pleasing, but I can see that and I would have liked a little bit better performance from that. If we swing it over to the Tamron, I think it's softer and you can't see the edges as clearly, but it does do some weird things. It does distort it a little bit. It's not perfectly yeah. circular. Looks like some uh, American footballs there in the top as well. Pretty Squishes much. Squishes it sort of down. Pretty much. Yeah. And the one orange light here, it kind of gives a like a like a double impression, yeah. which is a little bit weird to me and makes it a little bit less pleasing. Yeah. You know? Then going over to the Sigma, in my eyes, I think these are the best. It is yeah. soft, it's circular, it's, it's seems, very pleasing. Seems quite accurate, yeah. Mm. Very, very pleasing bokeh delivered by the Sigma lens. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a strong tick for the Sigma. Now, next up, we are going to macro. Now, there is quite a big difference when you look at sort of the tech specs of these lenses in terms of minimum focus distance. Specifically, this shot, we tested the wide. So shooting yes. on the wide of the lenses, either it being 28 or 24 mil. And here's where the Sony probably suffers the most because of the minimum focus distance, I think is what, 38 centimeters? Yeah, 30, 37 centimeters yeah. on that. And it's very, very clear. Um, the yeah. other two lenses get you incredibly close to the subject matter. It's not obviously not quite a macro shot, but it is very close and very usable. And if you look at the images taken with both the Sigma and the Tamron lenses, the sharpness is there. If That's you really punch good. in on that center of the image, it is incredibly sharp. In the Sigma shot, there's a little bug um, on one of the petals and it came out crystal clear, very, very sharp. The Tamron, the focus is more on the stigma of the flower. That is where the focus point was in this Tamron shot, crystal clear, yep. sharp, bang on. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, when you do go to the Sony, obviously this is much further away. So it gives you this impression of it's not really a macro shot. Mm. Even though the flower is really crisp, when you start zooming in, you kind of lose out on the 24 megapixels that we were using. Correct. And it looks decent, but it's not quite macro. It'll give you that macro feel. Indeed, make no mistake, it's still a sharp image and the quality that you get out of it is still phenomenal, but rightly so, you don't quite get that macro feel out of it. 
Now, next up, we tested the macro on the long end of the zoom. So the tele of the zoom, which is mostly either 70 or 75 mil. And this is probably where we'll be using most of the macro capabilities of these lenses. Now, you spotted, or I think Jess spotted this sort of spider nest and we kind of zoomed in. Yeah, and again, as with all the previous shots, at first glance, they are incredibly similar. The Sony lens gives wonderful definition of all the spider webs here in the foreground. The focus point is bang on. I think it's a very, very solid shot. Switching over to the Tamron, very similar. Yeah. But you rightly spotted a little difference there immediately between the Sony and the Tamron. And it happens sort of in the top right of this web cluster where you actually pick up slight aberrations mm. on the edge. So obviously your spider web is quite a bright subject and your background being a little bit darker, light coming in from the rear through it, you can see quite clear that there's a little bit of a color aberration happening along the edge there. So well done for Tamron on that actually. Absolutely. Now if we look at the Sigma shot, again, the sharpness is there, no doubt about it, and it's nice and crisp and clear, but the Sigma actually has, in my opinion, slightly worse aberration than what we saw on the Sony lens. That yeah. color line that fills the entire edge of the web is actually quite pronounced. Yeah on the Sigma lens. Looks kind of blue in a weird way. Indeed, indeed. And you also see it a little bit on the one strand that exits the frame to the top right. You can pick it up there as well. And I think the Tamron actually controls that aberration really, really well. So for the next set of images, we shot a portrait. And again, exactly the same settings, no manipulation on any of these. And I'm just gonna say it right off the bat, absolutely identical between these three. The sharpness is there, focus was on the eye closest to the camera. They are all pin sharp and they are stunning. Yeah, we shot on a standard color profile because mm -hmm. this was also quite a nice test to check the color because we've got a really crazy green background, a maroon t-shirt with some blue jeans. So you can kind of see in terms of color rendition of all three images, really good, really positive. This is kind of where I expected the Sony to be a cut above the other two lenses. And I was pleasantly surprised when we opened these images and I saw that the Tamron and the Sigma performed just as well. I really can't separate these three images on anything. Sharpness, color, the accuracy, it's, it's bang on. Now, next up, we tested sort of autofocus accuracy in continuous frame rate. Now, we're shooting with the a7 III, which is 10 frames per second, and we specifically set it to face and eye detection. Now, I was walking across on this little bridge and on purposely looking left and right. So, looking at all three images, really positive overall, except for the one that had a slight sort of miscalculation. Yeah, so there was a specific frame that the Sigma dropped, but up until that point and after that point, the focus was locked on perfectly. Really, through all the testing, the Sigma was the only unit that lost focus literally for one frame. The Sony, obviously, absolutely perfect. And if I look at it, I feel like the Sony maintains the focus accuracy slightly better. Yeah. But, you know, really, like you have to really, really scrutinize to pick up anything like that. Given that these are third party lenses and they are sort of kind, trying to adapt to the software that's coming out of the Sony body, I think the performance was pretty good. Now, after shooting with these three lenses and looking at the images that we captured, and remembering that the purpose of our test here was to determine whether these two lenses are viable third-party options as an alternative to the original Sony 2470G Master. To me, given everything that I've seen and what I experienced shooting with them, it's a simple yes. Yes, they absolutely are. And coming in at about a third of the price point of that Sony, if I was buying some of these, I would be pretty happy going with the Tamron or the Sigma. At that price point, I think they are so, so close to that Sony that you would be stupid not to consider them. Yeah, for me, it will be pretty much the same. I think in terms of lens performance, optical performance, autofocus performance, all of that stacks really well up to the Sony. 
I do have to say though, when it comes to a professional industry of someone that might be using the lens properly every single day on a shoot, maybe they're shooting in Namibia or on the beach, I think that's where the weather seal and the construction of the Sony would last a lot longer. So probably for a hardworking professional, that makes a lot more sense. But looking at these in terms of their performance stacks up really close to the Sony original. And that'll be it for our real world test on the Sony mount of the 2470 range. Now we really hope you guys enjoyed it and let us know in the comments below which one you'll be getting. Yeah, and hit that like button if you enjoy this type of comparison videos and would like to see more of it. And please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.